Welcome back to the channel. It is a beautiful fall day, kind of windy, but our leaves are now falling off the trees, filling up the lawn. So uh, we have a kind of a big project to do today, and that is we are going to build a kayak support rack system down by the gravel pad so I can get the kayaks that are laying on the ground uh, standing up over the winter to get them off the grass. To do that, I have 4x4x10 four by four by foot long pressure treated lumber that I'm going to dig holes in the ground and stand them up. Use some of that foam concrete post hole stuff and uh, then build some supports. It's going to be an easy task. Um, the biggest issue is I don't have a post hole digger, so I'm going to use the backhoe on the Kubota and the narrow trenching bucket to dig sort of a small trench as opposed to a hole. And then uh, hopefully that will be enough so that the ground can support it. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. But first we have to switch over from the wood chipper to the backhoe, so let's do that now. So I will be taking it off and leaving it right here for now. It does have pallet fork mounts, so I haven't been able to yet figure out what I'm gonna do for a dolly for this. I'll put a link to that video here, talking about what I was gonna do with this. So for now, I'll just drop it here, and then when I have to go move it around, I'll use the pallet forks into these areas here. So I was just taking the pins out, and uh, it's too tight down here. I can't slip this off, because my turnbuckles are too tight. So I'm gonna have to get the wrench out to uh, Loosen those so I can have enough play to move this off. Oh, I really don't like that. This is the first kind of ammo box that I've seen that has a removable lid and it's bothering me. So let's get these out. And we'll just loosen one of these enough that I can uh, get this off. that's enough uh, clay. There we go. And there we go. Just in time. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Good. <clears throat> what are we up to today? We are taking the wood chipper off. We're going to put the backhoe on nice. and dig three little small trenches. Excellent. Let's get to it. <laughs> And that's the easy way to take off your three-point hitch. I won't need the PTO shaft, so I'll put my cover back on. So now that that's off, we will uh, get the backhoe ready. We're just gonna pull the backhoe out, put it in this position, then we'll drive the tractor back in and do the hookup.
That's it. We're good to go. Let's head on out. And go. And go. So it's a lot easier to install this whole thing than those two little hitch and the two You still here? <laughs> My trenching bucket as a test. And we're going to take off our 12 inch bucket and put this six inch bucket on and we'll see how that goes. Oh, why they wouldn't use the same bolts to make this a lot easier. <laughs> then we're going to put it down closer to the ground. Okay, let's tap those pins out. So these three have to line up, this one, this one, and this one. Let me twitch you out. Can you come down a little bit? With, um, with this? Watch your camera. Okay. Right. One more? That's okay. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> down more? No. Just this. Seems like do it. Not much space. It's just this. So let's see if the bucket fits in between here. Oh, yeah. No, there's a space on this side. No. Mm -hmm. This side there is. Oh. So we run into a bit of a snag. The trenching bucket has a extra gap on uh, extra spacer on one side but not the other and it's interfering with the claw <laughs> cut <laughs> so we're going to just take an eighth of an inch off this is the unscientific way of doing it sure All right, so now that that's been ground down. I think I put it in the wrong way though. I don't think so. All right, right. Yeah. Okay. We'll put the pin in and rotate it up and put the back pin in. Well, you put the pin in everything. Dude. The unit, why the hell is this thing? Can you, can you rotate that forward? Put the pin in. A few minutes later. Down. Okay. Not in all the way. Nope. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll just tighten these up. Where'd the uh, ratchets go?
And there it is. There's the bucket on. We're just going to start the tractor up and see if it goes through its motions. Make magic happen. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Out. So I just greased up some of the grease fittings on the backhoe. I ran out of grease. Aiden is putting fuel into the tractor and then we'll go dig some holes. We're on the gravel pad with the Kubota BX and the new trenching bucket and we are going to put this uh, kayak rack along this spot here. So it'll start here. There'll be three posts, one, two, three, with some uh, supports. So I'm just going to push some of this foliage back and uh, take it from there. First few scoops, the issue we're having is the dirt will not come out of the bucket.
So we're gonna take a break. Uh, this trenching bucket is not working well for digging a hole straight down. After all this time, I've only been able to dig about two, two and a half feet down, which is not enough. I need to go four feet down, but it's just taking way too much time. Uh, the other issue is that the trenching bucket doesn't self evacuate enough of the dirt. It's all packed inside. Um, so it, the ground is really wet, so it's getting clumpy in there. So I'm gonna switch back to the other bucket. Yes, it'll make a bigger hole, but it'll be way faster. The curve on this one means that I can't dig out far enough to get in deep. It always wants to just kind of scrape along the edge. Uh, so I'm gonna switch back to the other bucket and we'll do it from there at a later date. So just to finish this off, uh, this was a big failure on my part this time. So this, uh, I'm sorry you didn't get to see the rest of this video of me installing the three posts and building the kayak supports. Uh, I'm going to rethink that and just do ground level ones, sort of like those big signs you see at uh, real estate uh, new development things where there's a 10 foot 4x4 post on the ground with some stanchions and whatever and then I'll lean the kayaks against that. I'll do them in two 8 foot sections so that I can move them around and it won't be hard uh, mounted in this spot. The other thing I wanted to mention, the trenching bucket is not designed as a post hole digger. This angle is way too aggressive to be able to dig down and scoop. Uh, the other issue is that it fills with dirt, so you're only taking out handfuls of dirt. It's very narrow, uh, and it doesn't eject the, the wet soil well enough. It's kind of hard to see now, but it's I'm also not very impressed with Kubota in the use of so many different size screws. So to get the trenching bucket off, you have to take out this pin. So there's a safety screw here, which is like a 10 mil. This one is like a 13 mil. Then you have to take out this one. You also have to take out this pin, which is over here. And it's a different size right here with the safety pin as well and here. So there's like three different size nuts and bolts you need to take apart. So it'd be really nice if Kubota standardized the size of those nuts to make it a lot easier for single tool uh, removal or just go with a quick release uh, bucket like on the bigger stuff. That would be even better. I know it's a small tractor, but if you're changing out those implements, my brother said it perfectly, those are the type of impl implements that you change when you're charging by the hour because it could take you quite a long time to get that switched over. Other than that, that's a big fail on my part. Uh, we'll take that up in the next videos. Some down, sometime down the road. Uh, so in the meantime, that's what we're gonna do for now. And we'll rethink this in a future video. How's that?